before Dr. King had a dream, before Rosa kept her seat, and before Montgomery took a stand, Baton Rouge played its part. Theodore Judson Jemison was born on August 1, 1918, in Selma, Alabama. He was the youngest of Henrietta and David Jemison's six children. As a child, Jemison attended a local public segregated school. He went on to study at Alabama State University, where he obtained a bachelor's degree in science. He then earned a Doctor of Divinity degree from the Samuel D. Witt Proctor of Theology of Virginia Union University. After graduation, he was ordained a Baptist minister. From 1953 to 2003, Jemison presided over the Mount Zion First Baptist Church of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Following in his father's footsteps, Reverend Jemison became the president of the National Baptist Convention in 1982. Reverend T.J. Jemison's actions during the Baton Rouge, Louisiana bus boycott led to a compromise laying the foundation for future protests, advancing racial equality, and improving the lives of African Americans during the Civil Rights Movement. Between Reconstruction and the Civil Rights Movement of the 1960s, black codes and Jim Crow laws were used to enforce racial segregation in all areas of African American life. Jim Crow laws promoted separate but equal facilities for African Americans. Some of the more consequential laws forced blacks to attend separate schools and churches and required them to use separate bathrooms and drinking fountains. These laws also segregated public transportation by requiring African Americans to sit in the back of the bus and mandating they give up their seat for white riders. Although 80% of Baton Rouge's bus drivers were black, many of them were forced to stay in the aisles even though there were open seats in the front of the bus. Jemison was quoted in an interview by the National Public Radio. These people were coming from their jobs, they're mostly women, and they were standing up over vacant seats. And I thought that was just out of order and that was just cruel. In 1953, two years after black-owned transportation was declared illegal in Baton Rouge, the bus fares were raised from 10 to 15 cents, sparking animosity amongst the black bus riders. Even though they had to pay the full fare, African Americans were required to sit or stay in the back of the bus and were not given the same treatment as the white riders. During this time, Jemison publicly advocated for the desegregation of public transportation. I thought it was terrible that they could work all day for white folks and couldn't sit down on the bus. The blacks going down in the South Baton Rouge were forced to stand up over empty seats. They could put their bags, their bundles, in the seat, but they couldn't put their bodies. In early February of 1953, Jemison spoke to the city council concerning the unreasonable city bus regulations. In response to black communities' dissatisfaction with the current statute, the city council moved to approve Ordinance 222. The city council heard our plea. They passed an ordinance. The ordinance was Ordinance 222. That said that black people could sit from the back to the front, and whites could sit from the front to the back, there would be no reserve seats, and that first come, first serve. Mayor Jesse Webb and the council, along with the support of City Attorney Gordon King, unanimously approved Ordinance 222 on March 11th of 1953. The passing of this ordinance brought outrage to the white bus drivers and their white passengers, provoking them to completely ignore the ordinance. Later that year, on June 13th, Jemison purposely sat at the front of the bus with a copy of Ordinance 222 in his pocket to ensure that the new ordinance would be enforced. The bus driver reprimanded Jemison and immediately drove him to the closest police station. Luckily, the police officer at the scene took the reverend's side, proving to Jemison that the ordinance was effective. Two days after this incident, over 100 white bus drivers went on a four-day strike. Before the strike ended, plans for a citywide bus boycott were released on June 18th, galvanizing the black community and encouraging them to participate. Raymond Scott appeared on a radio program to promote the boycott, along with a black maid who recounted a conversation with her employer. She was quoted, The buses are rolling, but we're not riding. On June 19th, Ordinance 222 was overturned because it conflicted with Louisiana's segregation laws. After reverting back to the old transportation laws, 
the bus drivers ended the strike. On that same day, the African American community officially began a citywide bus boycott of the Baton Rouge public transportation that lasted until June 24th. Over the course of the boycott, Jemison organized a free ride system called Operation Free Car Lift. This system allowed boycotters to travel their normal routes to and from their work with the help of 120 volunteer drivers. In order to better organize the boycott, mass meetings were held at local McKinley High School and collections were taken to pay for the gas that fueled the operation. Well, at night, when we had our mass meetings, we would take up money that would pay for the gas and the tires and whatever else happened to the cars during the time they were driving. The, the people rode free in the day and paid for it at night. Eventually, the meetings grew so large that they were forced to move to Memorial Stadium. These meetings gave momentum to the boycott and got the surrounding community involved. With the majority of the riders boycotting, the bus companies lost over $1,600 each day. This significant loss urged the bus companies to come to a compromise with the protesters. On June 24, 1953, the City Council passed Ordinance 251, which allowed black passengers to fill the buses from back to front, with the two back seats reserved for African Americans, while white passengers could fill from front to back with the first two seats reserved for them. This ordinance was a compromise that satisfied Jemison because he believed the people of Baton Rouge would end segregation on their own. The Baton Rouge bus boycott influenced other protests that would greatly impact the civil rights movement. On December 1, 1955, Rosa Parks initiated the Montgomery bus boycott by refusing to give up her seat to a white passenger. Shortly thereafter, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. reached out to Reverend Jemison for advice on planning and executing a successful bus boycott. Dr. King, along with the black community in Montgomery, Alabama, went on to lead the Montgomery bus boycott from 1955 to 1956. Their triumph is partially due to the advice of Reverend Jemison, who aided Dr. King in organizing the free car ride system that was used over the course of the boycott. In January of 1957, Reverend Jemison founded the Southern Christian Leadership Conference on Transportation and Nonviolent Integration. Alongside of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Reverend Ralph Abernathy, and Reverend Fred L. Shuttlesworth. The name was later shortened to the Southern Christian Leadership Conference and is now a nationwide organization that is open to all, regardless of race, religion, or background. Although the movement mostly focuses on the United States, it has not stopped them from influencing people and organizations around the globe because the human rights movement transcends national boundaries. Prior to the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the Supreme Court attempted to appease African Americans by introducing laws granting them civil rights and furthering the movement that began with the Baton Rouge bus boycott. However, no laws were enacted until 1964 because of widespread resistance to integration on a legislative level. The act was signed by Congress on July 2nd, prohibiting discrimination against sex, race, religion, and nationality in all public accommodations and employment. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 was one of the most important acts passed during the Civil Rights Movement and has led to laws that continue to be used today, such as the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. Although the Baton Rouge bus boycott did not directly end segregation, it was a significant compromise that eventually led to the end of segregation throughout the country and vastly improved the lives of African Americans. Reverend Jemison died in Baton Rouge on November 15, 2013. Shortly after his death, President of the United States Barack Obama recognized Jemison for his heroic impact on the civil rights movement. Jemison inspired Americans across our country with the courage of his convictions and the depth of his faith. Reverend T.J. Jemison sought to improve the daily lives of African Americans by organizing a peaceful protest to demonstrate the unfair treatment brought about by the Jim Crow laws on segregation and public transportation. In the process, Jemison's courageous boycott of the Baton Rouge buses began the first citywide attempt to desegregate public buses. Reverend Jemison's monumental work towards racial equality set the framework for the advancement of African American rights by turning a conflict into a compromise. You don't judge a giant by how tall he stands. You judge him by the footprint he leaves on history.